Why, hello there, Anxious Cynic, back again with another Minimator tutorial. And today I figured we'd cover 3D text. So this is a question I've been getting asked a bit, and I figured I'd go ahead and get that knocked out for you guys. So, what we're going to do is go ahead and start off in Minimator by creating an item. You don't have to do it this way, but we're just going to go ahead and have that set up for us. So there you go. That's an item, and as you can see, it has three-dimensional elements to it and whatnot. And we're gonna use this to create our 3D text. This is very similar to, or actually the exact same process as the custom items tutorial that I did. So feel free to check that out if you want to. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and create our text for this item. So let's go ahead and hop into GIMP. All right, guys, so we're in GIMP. And just in case you use GIMP for yourself, you may notice that this looks quite a bit different than how GIMP looks. looks when uh, you install it yourself. So what I did is go up to window on the uh, the main toolbar that you have and I went to single window mode and that puts GIMP in this kind of traditional format here and that's what I did and how I did it. So if you want yours to look the same way, then uh, feel free to do that yourself. So what we're gonna do is go to file, we're gonna go to new and we're gonna create a template for our text. So let's just go ahead with a 1280 by 400 might be okay. We'll go with we'll stick with 1280 by 400. I don't think the size of this really is that uh, important, but that's what I'm gonna go with. So we want all of our options to pretty much stay the same except for background color, the fill width. We want transparency, so we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna hit OK, and then we get this. And this checkeredy background, of course, means it is a transparent background and that is what we need. Do not use a solid color back there. Uh, so we're gonna go over here to the text tool. And once again, I'm using GIMP this time. I usually go with Photoshop, but a lot of you guys don't have Photoshop and this is a free uh, photo editor graphics program. So I figured I'd use it for the tutorial this time. Uh, you can use anything you want as long as it allows you to have transparent backgrounds and, so, and uh, and the ability to save in PNG format. So we're gonna go ahead and create our text here. Let's go over to our color and we're just gonna make it white. You can use whatever color you want. I'm just gonna go with white because it's a neutral color. And another very important thing to note is you want anti-aliasing turned off. You do not wanna leave anti-aliasing on. It will cause problems as I have experienced before. Anyway, we're just gonna go ahead and click here and we're gonna type, all right. So we've got this, and I could have set up the uh, the stuff before we started typing, but uh, for now, I'm just gonna do it the way we did it here. So you have like your font type over here and your size and all this stuff. So what I'm gonna do is select our text. Once again, if you set this up before you started typing, then it's probably fine. But for me, I did it afterwards, so this is how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna backspace this, and the cool thing with uh, GIMP here is you can just start typing, and you'll come up with uh, the fonts that you have in your library. I'm gonna go with Minecrafter to get my Minecraft font. And I'm gonna up our size. Let's just see what 100 looks like. And there we go. So let's go ahead and grab our move tool and move this in the frame. Looks like it's pretty good. It's not too bad. So that's pretty much it. That's the text that we're gonna be using here. Let's actually change this uh, this 1A here so that way we can get kind of an interesting look there. 1A is the uh, the special one and this one, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't matter for this tutorial, I'm just saying. All right, so let's move this. And what I'm going to do is actually click on this alignment tool and then you'll have these options down here. And what this does is allow you to move the text or whatever item you have selected to a particular place in the screen. If I click this one, it'll align it with the vertical center. And if I click this one, it'll put it at the horizontal center. Or do I have that backwards? Anyway, I don't know. Uh, so you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and move this one to be aligned with the bottom and the uh, horizontal center, I guess that would be. All right. So usually I leave them in the middle, but I think this may help us with uh, our 
rotation point of our text. All right, so here's our text, and now we're going to save it as a PNG. And instead of going to Save As, you're going to want to go to Export. I'm just going to go with Export As. All right, so once I've chosen where I want to save it, I'm going to Export as a PNG, which is as already selected. And I'm just going to call it uh, Minimator text there we go oh god i can't spell okay so before we get to minimator it comes up with this other screen asking us all this information i'm just gonna leave all this on default and just hit export all right so we're back in minimator and we have our sword here still and what we're gonna do is go to our sword within our library we're gonna click on the image which is the texture I'm going to navigate to my folder that has my texture in it which is the minimator tutorial text and we're going to click open and you get this and this is your 3d text it looks amazing all right so just like we did with the custom items we're going to go to the use as sheet and we're going to turn that off and there you go that is your text and it's extremely small as you can see but what we're going to do is go on down here. We're going to create a keyframe. We're going to change our rotation point and bring this down so we can actually kind of see what our text is doing. Uh, you may have to kind of eyeball where it needs to be somewhere right around there, which is, let's just say maybe 11. It's not 100% perfect, but it is what it is. And we're just going to take it and we're going to scale it up and make it huge. Let's just make it like 25 and there it is that is your text now it looks kind of derpy here but if we turn on rendering then we'll get all these lighting effects here and you can see there is your beautiful 3d text and it looks stupendous and uh as you can see how clean the lines are around it and whatnot if you used anti-aliasing if you're having any problems with the the sides not being like solid sides and things like that, then chances are your text has anti-aliasing on and you need to turn that off. Another thing to note is I use the Minecraft text here, which works perfectly for Minimator because of the square nature of it. If you're using a normal text that has a lot of curviness and bends, then it will have kind of a, um, a pixelated kind of look because Minimator doesn't seem to handle curviness stuff that well, especially for this purpose. So... That's something to note. It doesn't mean that it necessarily doesn't look good. It just won't look as smooth and pristine as you might hope. So now that we've got our 3D text sorted out, I actually went ahead and kind of evened out the bottom, uh, the rotation point, which was kind of an odd number here. It was 11.312, and that's probably not 100% exact, but close enough for our purposes. Anyway, once you get this all set up, then you can pretty much animate this just like you would anything else. For instance, one example that I have is my uh, another Minecraft Let's Play intro that you may have noticed. So what I'm going to do is kind of emulate that for you guys and kind of just show you an example of how you can work with this, things that you can do. So we're going to take this up and let's just make it about 200 in. And when it comes in, it's just going to drop down and land on the ground. This is way too slow, so let's go ahead and do that. Boop. It does like that. So one thing you could do here is give it a keyframe transition. Let's see if we would want maybe this one. And that would give you that nice bounce effect there. And uh, you can obviously play with some of these and get different effects if you wanted to. You have that one. This is kind of rubber bandy kind of look and whatnot. Anyway, we're just going to go with this one. Do something like that. Another thing that you can do, though, if we just go ahead and do like that, if we had this come down and instead of using transition, uh, keyframe transitions, we're going to do our own thing. So how about when it comes down here, then at this point, just over a couple of frames, we're going to mess with our scale a bit. We're going to have it come on the Z scale. Let's just say it kind of squishes down. Let's, yeah, let's just go to about 16 here. And we want it to go on our X, I think. Something like this. It's not going to be 100% perfect, like something that you could do with Blender, per se. But uh, 
we'll just try that and see what happens. I'm also messing with the wrong keyframe here. Sorry about that. Let's just go ahead and correct that real quick. There we go. So it comes down, it hits, and it squashes out a bit. Let's see. Let's have it go a little bit slower. So it can kind of hit, and it like squashes out. And then let's have it come back up. So we're just going to copy this keyframe and bring it back over. And this is the one we're actually going to see if we can use our bouncy sort of transition. Doing something like that. So if we had this come up, bring this out a little bit. So obviously, you know, you would have to play with the timing or whatever. But you can do all kinds of cool effects here. Something like that. Actually, for this one, I think we would want to have the Y scale out a bit too. Maybe it goes to uh, 28 as well. Have it kind of do a whole, whole thing here. And then if we bring this out, we can get some of that bounciness a little bit more. Yeah, a little more bouncy there. So that's another tip for this transition, the uh, the elastic ease out. Is that the further out the uh, keyframe is, then the more uh, that will play out over time. So you can make things look really kind of thick elastic and have a quick bounce to them, or you can give it more of a jelly effect and have it kind of do it a little bit slower. Uh, so that's an example, just a basic example of just, you know, how you would take 3D text and animate it a bit and do some cool stuff with it, have it look like it hits the ground and dang old squishes and, and whatnot. It doesn't have to be a 100% rigid object. You can make it seem like it's made of jelly or something. You could uh, change the color, of course. Let's go ahead and select all of our keyframes here and change the color of our text very easily by messing with the mix percentage or whatever if we wanted to make it red. Then we can do that. You can obviously bring out the brightness, but that will get rid of some of your 3D-ness because of the lighting inside. So I would recommend most likely leaving the brightness down. All right, so one more thing to uh, mention to you guys if you wanted to do another thing that you could do with this, since this technically is an item. For instance, when you're in Minecraft and you drop an item, it will bounce up and down on the ground a little bit, let you know, hey, I'm an item. Well, you can do the same thing with this even if it's text. So if you come over here to the library and you turn on bounce, it'll do the same thing as any other item within Minimator. So you can do that and have this kind of constant bounciness to give your text some more life. Don't really know if that's a desirable effect, but it is what it is. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for today. I hope yeah, I learned something. <laughs> I cannot talk today. This tutorial and last tutorial have been rough. I can't talk for some reason. I apologize. Anyway, I hope that helped. Hope you learned something. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it. Thanks for joining me, guys. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial, if you learned something, and if you want to see more, feel free to comment. Let me know your ideas on anything else you'd like me to tackle. And I will see you in the next video.